Okay. Okay. So my first little question for you, and maybe if you want to put it in the chat, you can. Um, so how do you, how do you feel when your successes and those of your team are celebrated at work? How do you feel about that? So maybe just put that in the in the chat there because today what we're doing is we're talking about celebrating successes and we're talking about not just the way we celebrate successes um, of our teams but also how we as leaders can celebrate our own successes so there's there's kind of two different components but let's first of all let's start let's start with the why why bother what uh, what does it what does it bring for us so we might feel, uh, yeah, so we've got proud and happy and hand success around as much as possible. Yeah, so it's all, it's all good. It's all good. It all makes us feel good. And yet we do find it really quite difficult. Are there any other things that you get from it, would you say? Um, in the chat would be good because the, in fact, when I'm recording, it's basically just recording me. It can't hear you. I'm going to say something. Say. Yeah, recognising success can be in the middle of failure. Oh, yeah, I don't, I, well, personally, I don't think that's controversial at all. I think it's absolutely spot on. We, we need it so much. Yeah, and the milestones, recognising milestones, absolutely. Yeah. What kind of, uh, on sometimes someone is left out. So if you look at it from the other point of view, when people are not left out and everyone is part of that celebration, how does that make the team feel, would you say? So we're assuming in this case that it's going well, that the celebration is, is well done. It's including everybody. Yeah, feels like a team. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels like a team. And this is so important. And it takes lots of effort not to leave people out. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, it, when you're celebrating the success of everybody, then it's much easier to keep everybody in the fold, isn't it? So I think what we're looking at here is uh, recognition. So we're looking at the success as much as possible, handing the success around and appreciation. Um, motivation. Now, I don't know whether either of you mentioned that, but motivation, I think, is something that comes out a lot when we talk about when we're celebrating success. It gives people real motivation. That sense of a team feeling like a team being in the group and I think this is I think this is so important it's it's very difficult to measure isn't it it's so difficult to measure and how do we how do we know that that's actually happening but we I think we've all been there in that position where we felt like we're in that group we're in the team there is that sense of belonging as well and related to that I think there's something very important that I, I'm sure that this year more than ever we've we've seen that it reduces loneliness because when we don't feel part of the team then people do feel very lonely and they have that feeling of isolation and we know we know that if we can protect people from that 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 protects them against burnout it protects them against physical and health issues and you know and that's surely just that on its own means that celebrating success is worth doing but many many organisations, although they work hard to put well-being at the top of the agenda, and it's very much at the top of the agenda for many places now, I would argue that they're missing a trick by not focusing on this relatively simple aspect of leadership. And uh, and today I just want to look at uh, at really uh, what what we can do about that in a very practical way, and how we can perhaps look at it from a different point of view to make it more accessible and. Uh, and maybe something that leaders can put at the top of their agendas um, without too much of an issue. Now, if we just start with a great quote from Nelson Mandela, who says that, let me just find it. He said, remember to celebrate milestones as you prepare for the road ahead. 
And I think this is this is so important. And as you, as you said, uh, um, recognizing success can be in the middle of failure. It's it's so important, isn't it? Because we're never finished. So we're always on the road. We're always looking at milestones. We're never we're never at the end. There's always another project coming along. So those milestones, if we don't celebrate those, if we're always waiting for the end point, then I think we we really are missing something. So what can leaders do? Or what do they do now? So generally, I think when you ask leaders, they, they come up with a range of things that they do quite normally and quite naturally. So they give verbal feedback, and that could be in private or publicly. They might give written feedback and celebrate by email, by sending cards and messages, or even sending out newsletters. They might um, have events, for example. So they might organise an event for their team or for the entire organisation. And this could be you know, a Christmas, big Christmas party to celebrate the successes of the year. Um, it might be bonuses. Obviously, bonuses are a large part of a lot of uh, corporations, their way of celebrating success. Some might, some give a time off and some might even book an experience or uh, book a meal out for everybody or, or in this time of COVID, send a meal to people's houses. So there's lots of different ways. Um, but I think... All of those ways, I would say, are useful. But I wonder, do they actually change behaviour or performance in the long term? Now, I think probably verbal feedback, both in private and public, that could. Um, But I think the other things like bonuses, um, time off, having these experiences, whilst they're nice and they do give that feeling of being in a team, which is always important, they they can become very generic. You know, the the big party, the big bash. What is it that we're actually celebrating? And I think it's this question that I'd like us to look at today. So could we look at it really from a different angle? So I'm going to suggest to you four different ways that we could look at this. And the first one, and I think it's probably the most important, is what do you want to develop in your team? Let's start from that point of view. So from here, if we've asked that question, what do we want to develop? Then we know what we should be celebrating. And this old adage, you know, evaluate what you value. Well, why not reward what you value as well? Why not celebrate really what you value? So I I would like you to just have a think about what are the three top areas or qualities that you want to develop in your team or across your team. So that could be, it could be very broad things like creativity or um, developing a growth mindset or listening skills, or it could be something much more specific that you want to increase sales in the month of May, whatever it is. So think of three areas and qualities that you want to develop in your team and make a quick note of those and then think well what um, what activities are going to address those so here you're thinking about your planning really so what activities are on there so if you're thinking about um, encouraging your team to I don't know um, in, improve their listening skills maybe you've you've booked somebody to come in and give some training on listening and listening skills and how to develop that so that's maybe your activity And so that takes us on to the second area. So using those top three areas, we want to make our celebrations very specific. So we want to say why we value that particular task, why we value that particular target, that particular area that we're developing. Because if we celebrate success and link it back to the reason why we're doing it, then this uh, this totally changes the whole uh, the whole process. So and then I want you to think, well, how could you give that celebratory feedback and what would work best for your team that every team is going to be different? I want you to think this and this might seem like a strange question, but how can you speak their language? What is it that they value? What is it that they're going to see as a reward? And then how are you going to link it back to the quality or the area that you wanted to celebrate, that you want to develop further? So I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Fabulous. So taking ownership. Yeah, so that's, oh, that looks really interesting. So taking ownership, engaging outside the team to solve the problem and fighting hard on customers' behalf. Great. So when you're planning your celebrations, because obviously we need to be positive here and assume that they're going to get there, they're going to make progress with that. 
Can you think of how you can um, how you can address those particular points in the way that you celebrate it? What's going to be a good way to celebrate that? Is it going to be an email? Is it going to be uh, a discussion that's fairly public or just amongst the team? Is it going to be sending out some information to other people across the company about what you've done? And uh, and with there with those things, you've got you've got a number of different areas. So some things might be might be better suited to certain different areas. So let's think very specifically and go beyond the general "oh well done, haven't you done a good job?" kind of feedback. Let's make it really specific. And so there's some really good news about this because, uh, you know, a lot of people find giving feedback really difficult. But I would say this can be very much your best place to start. So if you start with um, your areas here that you want to improve and then you're looking at, well, the progress that people have made. So that gives you a, a really good way in to give specific feedback. And as a result, it, it begs the question, well, what can we do better? How can we improve? And that's where you can give the more difficult feedback. So by building on the successes, building on those celebrations, that you're going to build into that feedback model, it means that you're giving the more difficult feedback suddenly gets just that little bit easier. Not in all cases, but it gives you that chance to have that discussion very naturally. Also, by giving very specific positive feedback, what you're saying is, this is important to me. So if I can just take your example there, you know, fighting hard on the customer's behalf, that to me is showing a very strong value that customers are first in your mind. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, so in that one, so if you've got somebody who's, who is actually doing that, that's a great thing to celebrate, isn't it? Because that's where you want people to go. That's the specific feedback you want to give. That's the value that you want to promote in your in your business. So that's that's going to be a great place to reward and to celebrate, because when we celebrate what we value, we get more of it. Simple as that. So if we build on that a little bit more and just uh, think about how can we build that into an everyday system where we're, where we're giving, we're finding opportunities all the time to celebrate success. So this could be in that everyday feedback model. That's really good. Let's do more of it. It might be communicating our values. So in this, in this example, well, customers, they really need to come first. They need to be, uh, they need to be central to our organizational development at all levels wherever whatever our priorities are whatever our values are whatever that's it whatever those uh, those key targets are we need to communicate those celebrate them and keep moving on it needs to be part of that cycle we also need to, if we want to do that, then we need to build in regular reviews. Having, uh, having, having reviews kind of every six months is not going to do it. It needs to be regular. And, uh, I mean, some, some companies I know do almost weekly reviews. Some people do every 12 weeks, whatever it is that works for you. It doesn't matter. It's what's important is, does it work for you and your team? Does it suit the way that your team communicate? So this is a, this is central to to really keeping this idea of celebrating successes. This is much more than just putting the icing on the cake. This needs to be an integral part of everyday life, in fact. So moving from that now onto the last point, which is that I think the fourth part of this is all about celebrating your own successes as leaders. So I think this is something that many leaders forget to do. Many leaders never reflect on their successes, not really. And and they and when I when I talk to leaders about this, they often say, well, they don't have they don't have time. They don't think about that. And so other things get in the way. And and they especially if they have to be very results focused, they don't have that space in their week, maybe or in their calendar to really spend time celebrating their own successes. So why is that important? Well, 
it's the same as your team. It's motivating. It's also confidence boosting. And it most importantly, it helps to build resilience when we can see where we've come. We can see what strengths we have. We can we have the proof. We don't need to rely on anyone else to give us that proof. We have the proof because we've looked back and we've seen what that proof is. We've got the evidence. And that is also, that gives us a, a, it gives us a great springboard to be positive with ourselves, but also that becomes quite contagious as well. Because when we start to look back and say, well, look where we've come. This is where we've come. Yes, we haven't got there yet, but the milestones have been reached. We're working towards them. Yes, we've had issues along the way, but we're, we're moving, we're moving forward. So I think um, as well as this, it really helps you to step into the new identity that you might be working on. And by that, I mean, if you're if you're making a lot of progress in terms of your own leadership development, often often we don't have time to catch up with that. So we might have put a lot of things in place. We might have started to even transform our whole approach to leadership. And then, but we've kind of forgotten to actually change our identity and change the way we think about ourselves as a leader. And what this does, when we start to celebrate our successes and start to look back from where we've come from, we start to see, well, actually, yes, we have made that those steps forward. We have changed because we don't always see it. And uh, I have to say, I often see this on on coaching programs because people do make very, very quick progress and they need that lag time almost to catch up with themselves. And, uh, you know, somebody who's who has transformed their leadership needs to step into that new identity and actually believe it, actually believe that they have become that great leader, that they have changed. They have uh, they have put into place things that they possibly didn't even think was possible. And this is slightly linked also to imposter syndrome. And, uh, and I think, you know, we have to we have to remember that with imposter syndrome, it's OK. It's it's part of moving forward. It's part of being humble as well. It's it's part of thinking, well, OK, yes, I've moved forward. Um, but let's look back, see where I've come. I, yes, I can I can take that now. I can accept that I have I have changed. I have moved forward. I've improved. And now, yes, this is this is me now. So it's a it's a it's a very important part of that development journey because if we stay lagged behind, we we have that feeling of well I don't deserve to be there. And we we need to we need to watch out for that. So celebrating your successes, well how do we do it? Well, you know, some people some people like to make big announcements. That's fine. That's one way of doing it and it definitely it definitely works. But many people don't feel comfortable with that. Many people don't want to uh, make a big LinkedIn um, declaration about how they've transformed their leadership. And so we need to find other ways. And there are other ways. And one of the one of the most um, powerful ones, I think, is this idea of gratitude. And you might think, well, what's that got to do with it? But in fact, gratitude can be an excellent way of looking and integrating your successes because you're not asking the question of, why, um, how am I great? That's not the question. You're asking the question, well, how have I, how have I managed to use my strengths today? How have I managed to, um, do, be the best that I possibly can? How have I managed to connect with people really well today so that we've done it, we've done a good job? What am I grateful for in that what other people have brought for me? What have other people brought from the team, from outside, possibly wherever that might be? So, so it, it involves looking back, it involves looking around, looking laterally and seeing what we have around us. And in doing that, uh, it, it takes us down that road of, of celebrating where we are. We may not see that as success, but it is success because you're all the time you're developing, you're moving forward. Now, obviously, that uh, that takes a bit of practice, but I have got a little app for you that, in fact, one of the one of the participants in uh, the Tuesday Zooms recommended to me, and I really like it. It's called Delightful, and I I just I just love it. So I can really recommend that as a way of getting going with that. If you're someone like me who gets a bit stuck and uh, might get in a bit of a loop of what we're grateful for, this app pushes pushes you out of that and asks uh, specific specific questions. For example, I'll just give you an example right now. So if I open uh, up the app for today, 
Mine's in French, actually, but I will translate it for you. <laughs> so, uh, so first of all, it gives you a little quote. So today's is, I cannot make my days longer, so I strive to make them better. That's nice, isn't it? And, uh, and then the questions. Um, so the first one is a good one. Yes. So what have you done to take care of yourself um, physically recently? So that's a that's a good way of celebrating your successes. So what have you done? What have you done to uh, to help to help yourself to be in, in good uh, in good form? Um, another one might be yes. One thing f- um, for which you are very proud. Sorry, I'm translating very badly there. Basically, um, something that you're proud of that you've done. Um, recently and uh, something yes and something simple that you are um, that you are grateful for so it gives you it gives you little pointers every day something different but basically it ends up being a similar kind of thing and it means that you're celebrating your successes without the big I am which many people feel uncomfortable with and but it's it's slowly building up that stock of uh, of successes that you can celebrate um, in in whatever way you like, either loudly or quietly, just as you as you wish. And of course, the more that you celebrate your own successes, what you will find is that you're actually celebrating your team's successes. So, in a sense, we've come a full circle here because when you celebrate your own, you start to celebrate others as well. Because when we are generous with ourselves, we're able to be generous with our team, and that, for me, is really the message. So let's be generous with ourselves and generous with our teams. And just to just to conclude there, um, I think I'd just like to recap on what celebrating can really bring for us as leaders. So obviously it motivates, it engages, it gives people direction because if they understand what's important, the values, then they know where they're going. You're, you're using feedback, that positive feedback to help people move in the direction that it, uh, you're hoping they'll move in, but also say that so they can develop and grow themselves and finally and perhaps most importantly to promote a feeling of identity and community and reducing that loneliness um, at work that we know so many people have I mean the figures are the figures are very high I don't have them at the at the tips of my fingertips but it wouldn't surprise me if they are towards the 50% mark so re- having that sense of community real sense of team I think that's uh, that's possibly for me um, something that we can all uh, maybe think about. So it's it's a win-win really, and I think it, I would urge you as leaders to make it a number one strategy in your toolbox. It's not difficult. You can build it in to your everyday work with your team. And and what results? If you've got people who are engaged, feeling like they belong to a bigger picture, to something that's important, then they're going to be they're going to feel better. You're going to feel better. And ultimately, you're going to have a high, higher performing team. So that's where I'm going to leave you tonight before we uh, move into our discussion now. So I'm just going to turn off the recording there. Just uh, one second.